Afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our 1 p.m. live demonstration of the Penny Battery today. My name is Gabby with Arizona Science Center, and today we're going to talk a little bit about batteries, electricity, and we're going to build one of our own. And I'll talk about some ways that you guys can build your own at home as well. So first of all, let's think about electricity. What is electricity? What do we use it for? Where do we see it in our everyday lives? I bet if you just look around the room, you'll be able to see a lot of things that are powered by electricity. The lights, the refrigerator, your air conditioning, maybe your car runs on electricity. So electricity is really important for our everyday lives. Now the simple definition of electricity is just the flow of electric charge. Now when we think of something like a battery, it's the flow of electric charge as well, but just kind of in a smaller space. So something like this here is your standard battery. This is a AA battery, and this is about the voltage of the battery that we're gonna make today. Now in order for this battery to work, is this gonna power anything if it's just kind of standing here? Like if I rub it on my shirt, is it gonna power anything? No, so this needs to be connected to something else. If you've looked at a battery before, you might notice that there's two different ends to a battery, and both of these need to be connected in the correct way in order to power something. So it needs a flow, a connection, a circuit, if you will. So here I have a little energy stick. As you can see inside the stick, I have teeny tiny LED lights. Now, they don't seem to be working yet, but if you notice, there's two silver bands at the end, and these aren't connected. So if I grab one end and the other, the lights will go off. I'm completing the circuit. I'm kind of making a loop here, if you can see. So again, we need to complete the circuit in order to power something in the middle here. So we're gonna go ahead and look at that by building a battery stack. I'm gonna turn my camera around so that we can take a look at what we're working with. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna build a kind of battery called a voltaic pile. Now this was developed around 1800 by Alessandra Volta. And the first ever battery used a pile of metal discs maybe like what we have in front of us, and a salty cloth. So salt and things like that have a lot of electrolytes. Those are really good for allowing electricity to flow through it. So today we have a solution, but this is actually vinegar in here. So we're gonna look at what we need to do in order to power something like this little LED light bulb. So we're gonna do a light bulb and a buzzer today. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is get electrons flowing through some sort of order. So we're going to start off with a copper piece. So this is where the penny battery names, name comes from. So this is just a copper washer. Actually, I'm going to start with this one because, again, our, our battery needs to be connected like a circuit. So it needs a wire or something that's going to connect eventually to our light. So this is a copper um, piece here. Copper is really good at gaining electrons. So once we start to make a pattern, we'll talk about how those electrons are moving. So we're going to start here first with a copper washer. Now this needs to travel to our, um, we have a zinc washer here. Zinc loses electrons. It gives them away very easily, but it has to travel through somehow. So we're going to use one of these felt washers dipped in vinegar. So this battery that we're building here is an example of using an electrolyte solution to pass charge through. So we're creating a chemical reaction that's going to create chemical energy into electric energy. So now we have our copper, or sorry, our felt washer that's covered in vinegar there. We're going to add a zinc washer on top. And this is essentially one layer of the stack. So we have our copper gaining electrons. It's passing through the felt. Um, as this reaction occurs, it's making hydrogen gas uh, kind of uh, in a reaction with the acid and the vinegar there. And then the zinc is losing those electrons again. And that's going to pass out through the top and back down to the copper if we connect it. Now this little stack that we have here won't be enough to power the items that we have. So we're going to go ahead and repeat the process. So again, we're just going to allow these electrons to keep flowing through. So we're going to copy it again. We're going to do another copper. We're going to do 
another vinegar and felt, zinc, copper, vinegar and felt, zinc, we'll do, we'll try one more and see if that's enough to create our reaction. Copper, and then our top one is going to be this, um, the zinc that has this kind of alligator clip connected to it. So now that we have these, we have the ends. Now these need to be connected somehow, connected to something to show that electrical change that's happening. So we're going to go ahead and try the light first. So we're going to attach the bottom one to this longer prod, shorter one to this top prod, and voila! You can see it's lighting our little light. Oops, it's not focusing very well. Sorry about that. There we go. So you can kind of see it. It's lighting our light here. So again, we're we're kind of allowing that electric electricity to pass through those changing of electrons through each of those different materials there and then connected to each one of these wires. If we switch these, we'll see what happens. What do you think would happen? So if we switch those, it doesn't quite work. So that's not in the right circuitry of the light. Let's go ahead and try the buzzer. Now this runs on the same kind of technology as the light, so it's just a simple, um, very simple inside. Oh. All right, I don't know if you can hear that beeping through your video, it's kind of loud over here, but again, we were able to power our buzzer there. So this is the same kind of idea that they use in something like a commercial battery like this. So these commercial batteries use two materials, like metal materials, and an electrolyte solution to make an imbalance of charge again. So that imbalance of charge, that changing of charge, is called voltage. Now this AA battery has about 1.5 volts, and that's about the same as our voltaic stack right here. We have, we have four um, repetitions of this pattern, so that's about as much as is in here. So the difference between these two is in our voltaic pile, our electrons are flowing from the zinc to the copper, zinc to the copper, zinc to the copper. In a battery, the electrons are flowing from the negative to the positive terminal. So the negative side to the positive side, which is why you have to put a battery in properly in a flashlight or something like that in order to power up. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our Voltaic Pile Penny Battery Stack today. If you want to try this at home, think of other things that are filled with electrolytes. Something like a potato, very salty. Something like a lemon, um, very acidic, like our vinegar. You can make batteries with these at home too. So the same kind of thing if you want to make a lemon battery, which is pretty easy to make. You can use washers like this, or you can use um, nails that are coated in zinc and copper. Alternate those just like we did today through the pieces of the lemon, and then connect those to a light or a buzzer or something small like that. Super fun experiment that you can do at home. Thank you guys so much for watching and joining us today on our Facebook Live. Check out our website, azscience.org, for more awesome science that you can be doing at home, and have a great rest of your day.